Hi, this is Michelle V. Hill with the University of Wyoming Extension, Michelle's Money Minutes. Today, I'm gonna to talk about emergency savings part two. Um, in order to start an emergency savings, you wanna create a, a savings habit. So anything you can consistently put away to help you will help you get ahead and be able to utilize those funds when you do have a financial hiccup in the road. Number one, you want to set a goal. Two, uh, create a savings habit. And then you want to create a system for making consistent contributions. You, For example, if you have a financial institution, you're going to, when you get your check deposited, you will automatically have a portion of that check put into your savings account so that you don't see it and so that you it builds over time. Um, you want to regularly monitor your progress because every little step in the journey adds up and it's important to celebrate those things because it does get, sometimes when you're working on goals and working through life, it can get cumbersome and discouraging. So you want to maintain your hope, you want to maintain your, your cadence, you want to keep going. So you want to celebrate your successes, not spend it all, but celebrate your successes and see how much you have your progress. So that's, that's always helpful. Um, another strategy is to manage your cash flow when you're building your emergency savings. That's very, very important. You want to see what you have coming in and going out. So you may want to adjust your due dates for your bills um, because you may have more money available to use for a couple weeks. I mean, if you're able to move a little extra into savings, those different types of things. Also, take advantage of one-time um, one opportunities to save. Um, sometimes you get money that you're not expecting, like a tax refund, well, hopefully, uh, or a holiday, or a birthday, or a cash gift that somebody would like to uh, bestow upon you and give it to you. So that will help you with your save, build your savings account. And so those things always add up. It's amazing. Or a rebate or something that you didn't expect. Another strategy, like I said before, is make your saving automatic to where you're not looking um, uh, the recurring transfers through your bank or credit union so that the money is moved automatically. Just like I said before, depending on how much you wanna save and your situation will depend on how much you save. Try to be in a habit of being consistent with something. $5 can add up over time, but think about how much you could save if you really had more than that. Um, save through work. Another way to save automatically is through your employer. Your employer-based contributions for your retirement or your health savings account, all of those things can really make a difference. So make sure that you're utilizing those things in the best way possible. Um, and then where should you keep it? You know, that also depends upon your situation. So you want to make sure um, it's safe and accessible in a place you're not tempted to spend it or someone else is not tempted to steal it. Um, and, you know, unscrupulous family members who know about it. Don't tell anybody if you have that situation. A bank or credit union is a great way, great place, or a prepaid uh, uh, credit card may be a place uh, to keep your money as well. Cash also. So that's also the great way to keep it. So that's uh, my suggestions. Um, actually, it's the uh, CFPB suggestions, the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. They have fabulous resources. They have a great book um, that, they, that they, they have all kinds of publications that they give out. This one is Starting, start building your savings. And this is a fabulous book from the CFPB. They're very helpful with all of their stuff. So visit their website. There's a lot of free things on their website.